other people are either from Bern or from Aachen. And uh, I won't go much into proofs because we are all looking forward to launch and the excursion. But I will try to give you a feeling of the result. All right, so the work is about algorithmic meta theorems. So these are the theorems which call identify classes of tech table problems. So instead of saying, OK, I have my new algorithm which can solve the pairing, uh, I say, OK, I've got this very good way of deciding all the MSO properties as the famous theorem of Bruno. <coughs> uh, by the way, so one of the reviewers sent us a notice that we shouldn't call it the Kursal theorem because that it means that Kursal proved just only one theorem or something. So yeah, I, I make it public. I know we're not proving much, many more theorems than that. <laughs> right. uh, okay, so so we are interested in algorithmic meta theorems. Uh, well, I'll be talking about this particular theorem. Uh, so you will have it many times. You heard what MSO2 is, so that's very easy for me. I have different formula for three color ability than Bruno. This one is you can give it to students and they can get it, like all students, usually. Uh, all right. Uh, I want to state the theorem in, in a different way so I can use it later. So I define the model checking problem for MSO2 and a class of graphs uh, as a problem that's given a graph from the class and a formula of MSO2. I want to check whether G modulus five. Okay, so this is the statement. Well, can we do something better than this theorem? Do you know what we can do about it? So, are there classes of graphs of unrounded trivet such that Kursa's theorem still holds? So, so in a way, it says, well, let C be any class of graphs of bounded trivet. So, if the trivet is unbounded. Yes, so actually there is a result which says, yes, we can. Well, the time is xp. Uh, so this class this is basically a class of graphs which have logarithmic trivet. And there, actually, you can prove something like this. OK, so, so can we go somewhat higher? So, so how much higher can we go, really? So, and the first result of this kind was of Ritzer and Hazari in 2010. Uh, and it said basically if the trivet is bounded polylogarithmically, <coughs> then, uh, then the theorem fails. Uh, so uh, I need to define what's, how, to, how do we define trivet which is not bounded. So unbounded trivet. OK. so. So this is the definition of Kreutzer or Kreutzer and Hazari. So trivet of uh, is un strongly unbounded by a function f if, well, for every n, uh, if we apply f to the size of the graph, there is a graph such that if we apply f to the size of the graph, it's smaller than trivet. So 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 the trivet goes faster than the function of the size of the graph. Uh, this property. That, uh, which says the trivet of the graph Gn is between n and n to something. It's uh, something called density requirement. We don't want to have the graphs of very high trivet all somewhere in the distance or very big gaps in, in, in the sizes of those graphs. So, so this is the density requirement. Because if we do not have this requirement, then something strange may happen. And this is the third requirement, which I don't like too much, which says that the graph GM for every n can be constructed in time to, to the n to the epsilon <laughs> for some epsilon. Uh, uh, I don't really see a reason for it. The reason they define it this way is because it's used in the proof. Uh, so, so this is standard unbounded by a function f. Uh, of course, if you take uh, for f something bigger uh, than identity, then it will, be, it will look strange. Uh, okay, uh, 
I want to say what strongly unbounded polylogarithmically, which means that there is log to C of size of the graph must be smaller than trivial of the graph for all C. Yeah, so, so log to C. That's the important part. So now we get to the theorem of coincident Hazare. So there are like three versions I give you two. So one is from Soda last year, uh, which says, well, let's have a class with the following two properties. So first property, well, the derivative is strongly unbounded polylogarithmically. What's the second property? Well, the class of graphs is closed under the gamma colorings. Gamma coloring gets you color vertices and edges, and the class is of graph is closed under gamma colorings is if a graph is in the class, then any coloring of it is also in this class. And remember, you color both edges and vertices. So if those two are satisfied, then the model checking problem for now this MSO to extend it with gamma, we want to be able <coughs> in the MSO to talk about the colors, is not in XP, which is like, if you don't know what XP is, is the definition, unless the exponential time hypothesis fails. So uh, actually the original formulation is slightly stronger, which basically you can solve all polynomial time hierarchy in some exponential time. So this was the result in Soda and the new version in Lex gets rid of the colorings and talks about just close undertaking taking some graphs. So this is like nice improvement because this looks much nicer. So Again. So is it also we remove this computability of F assumption? Uh, no, where do? So no, 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 this is, uh, this is definition of the class XP. No. F does not need to be computable. Okay, yeah, I want. Okay, I, I live with this definition. Okay, so, okay. so it must. It's XP. Okay, forget about it. Okay. Right. Uh, so, so basically, what you do is you get rid of the tolerance and then you get to close undertaking some graphs, uh, which is okay. Uh, what we have done? Uh, well, uh, I'll go back. So, so this is uh, here. I have MSO two model checking. So. We said, okay, can we can we do something better than that? Well, is the MSO2 essential? And we, we thought it's not. And the other thing is we don't like the definition of strongly unbounded. So this is the new formulation. This is our first result. And we say, well, fix a label set L, and now let's have a class graphs such that the trivet is densely unbounded polylogarithmically and it's close under linking subgraphs so this is the second formulation of Kreutzer and Tazari. Then the model checking problem is not in XP unless the non-uniform exponential time hypothesis holds. So there are several changes in the formulation so I will comment on all of them. MSL1 you don't get quantification over sets of edges. MSL1L well, you need to have, you extend MSO1 with uh, labels, uh, vertex label predicates. Uh, C2DL, of course, this is class of all vertex labeled graphs from C. And finally, what's non-uniform ETH? Uh, that, that is just a statement that uh, SAT is, you cannot do SAT in sub-exponential time if it's sub-exponential advice. So, so non-uniform computational model, this is equivalent to having uh, having fixed size uh, for every input size having a circuit computing the problem. So, all right. So, the main improvements, as I said, well, we we define densely about it, uh, which is much nicer in the respect that we do not need to have the constructability uh, requirement. So we don't, do not require the graph GN to be uh, easily constructible. Uh, but we pay for it 
by requiring this non-uniform EDH. So we need need the advice dep which depends only on the size of the input, not on the input, but on the size of the input. Uh, second, well, we, we are able to move from MSO2 to MSO1, but with labels, right? And th uh, third improvement, we have much more simple and streamlined proof. So, so the original proof is basically uh, very long, technical. Uh, it's actually spread over two, three papers. So, so, and, and you really get get into defining classes such that you can do something. Uh, so, so now the proof is actually quite quite straightforward. All right. Uh, so we always get questions about uh, relationship between MSO2 and MSO1L. So MSO1L is much weaker than MSO2. So like Bruno gave you the list of problems which you cannot do MSO2, Hamiltonian path, you cannot do, do it in MSO1 or MSO1L. So the labels do not give you much. Uh, if you, so this theorem I quote here, this is the, that you can solve MSO1 uh, in linear time on, on graphs of bounded click width and you cannot extend it from MSO1 to MSO2 actually. So, so again, MSO1 is much weaker than J. Uh, the other thing about the labels we add, uh, I would claim that labels do not matter in this respect because many results concerning MSO1 can be formulated with or without labels. There is, I uh, know, this book about Finite model theory, and there, they, there is formulated everything about MSO1, and then uh, next thing is how well you can formulate with labels it also holds or something, and you get it with every set of theorem. Kosas theorem for a cleavage, and this theorem for cleavage can be also extended with labels, and they still hold. So, so we we claim that basically having these extra labels is nothing. I think really bad, and they don't, they don't give you much more than your MSO1. All right. Uh, so what's the proof outline? So so we basically follow the direction sketched by, uh, or used by Carrizo and Tazari. So it's a multi-step reduction from SAT uh, to, to our problem, and then you arrive at a contradiction. Uh, all right, uh, why, why the proof is shorter? So we don't need the complicated machinery they use uh, because we have the advice, which, which gives uh, the sub-exponential advice, which gives us basically uh, the skeleton of, of the graph on which, in which we encode everything. <coughs> so this is, so that saves like lots of pages, maybe eight pages, I don't know, lots. Uh, we also avoid the use of MSO2 uh, because we, we do not need to talk about edges or sets of edges. Uh, we use strong edge colorings, I will talk about them in a little while, which basically allow us to talk about vertices and think about edge sets, right? Okay, so this is like the short version of Kreutz and Tazari proof. So what you do, is, well you get a formula and you ask if it's satisfiable, well let's start. What you do is you take some graph from the class such, is, such that the derivative is, well, something uh, like big, etc., etc. So it's totally poor logarithmic unbounded, so you can do it. Uh, then you encode the formula in this graph in, in a smart way, and then you define a new MSO formula such that uh, uh, F, the original formula, is satisfiable if this formula is satisfiable in this graph. And then you show it, uh, you can basically design it in this time. Well, that's sub, 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 sub exponential in the size of the formula. And, well, that's that contradicts uh, ETH. Right. We basically our improvement is in this 
a second. The biggest improvement is in this section in the encoding. And <coughs> here we get the, some stuff for free from the advice function. Uh, so uh, I, I, I don't give you the details of the proof. I will tell you what we use in the proof. So first thing that's as the same as Kreutzer Tazari. So, so we encode formulas inside the grid-like graph. So, so grid-like graph it was defined as a grid-like minor. Uh, and we don't like the word minor here because it's slightly confusing. It was defined by Reed and Wood. So grid-like graph is a pair, which is a graph and collection of paths. The graph is the union of the, all these paths. Uh, each path has at least two vertices. And the intersection graph of this collection of paths is bipartite. So, so basically, we have two sets of paths. Uh, the paths in each set are uh, do not touch each other. Where, but they can intersect with the past in the other set. And why we can use it is this nice theorem, which, if we, which says if we have three with at least whatever, big enough, uh, uh, then we can get a uh, uh, get like subgraph of order L, and what's the order? It's the maximum integer such that the intersection graph contains a KL minor. So basically, grid-like graphs are generalizations of grids. You get, you get cliques in, in the intersection graphs. So, so it's a generalization of grids. Yeah. So that's the first thing you use. So the, this is in the, you encode your formula in such a graph, which you can find because of the theorem. Uh, what we use now are strong edge colorings, which <coughs> allow us to talk somehow about the sets of edges, sort of. Uh, so what's strong edge coloring? It's an assignment of colors to the edges of a graph, such that no path of length three contains the same color twice. So it is basically extension of the normal coloring of edges. And there is a very nice theorem we use heavily is that every graph of maximum degree 4 has a strong edge coloring using at most 22 colors. And this coloring can be found uh, with the polynomial time algorithm. So I usually say I don't like much strangely defined coloring problems, but in this case I must say, yeah, I like this one very much because uh, we could use it to, s to solve our problem. So, so that's that's very nice theorem actually, and you can, and because of this property of strong edge coloring, that uh, you know, two two edges don't have the same color but on path three, you don't get the same colors. Then you somehow can talk locally about about path, uh, which is very very nice. Third tool we use uh, it was MSO one interpretation. Uh, and this is our previous, this is theorem we used in our previous paper. Uh, that uh, for if you have MSO1 theory of a simple graph, you can efficiently interpret it uh, in MS, MSO1 theory of simple one three regular graph. So, so you really constate the structure of the graph. And actually you can the interpretation is very nice because it's actually invariant on the subdivision of edges. So, so now you, you basically can play with the graph a lot and still, still have the interpretation working. So, you know, interpretation you take graph and formula, and now, now you have you want to somehow uh, translate it to a, to a different formula, a different graph, such that the truth is preserved. That's what the interpretation is. So this is the third tool we used. And I won't get, tell you anything more about the proof. So so what do that. you call one of three regular? Uh, every vertex has either one or three regulars, if I remember. Uh, right. Uh, I, I showed you uh, our result. Uh, the result can be actually strengthened. 
So in the first statement, we had this fixed size of labels. Uh, now I can start on it. Uh, so let's see this. We have the following properties. Three of is densely unbounded. C is close to taking subgraphs. Then if the model checking, the, the model checking problem is not in XP for every finite, for every finite set of labels. So that's the difference. The set of labels must be, uh, that should be O, okay? The set of labels must be proportional to the size of the formula. So, so then this model checking problem is not in XP unless polynomial time is D time slash 2 to the O N slash sub X basically. Uh, uh, unless you can solve all problems in polynomial time hierarchy in sub exponential time, it's actually sub exponential advice. So this is like strengthening of the of the theorem. Uh, again, now now what we require is something slightly more. Again, this is not really this is you know on the set on the bar with ETH, the same kind of assumption. And actually we could use or modify the results to extend our previous result about uh, directed graph measures. So we had this result last year that uh, there are no good directed graph measures, or not, at least not as good as trivities for undirected graphs. And we were ex able to extend the statement of the theorem. So if you heard about it, so this is the extension. Uh, so unless non-uniform ETH fails, there is no directed width measure, such that this measure is monotone undertaking some graphs. Uh, Larger surpasses, surpasses the trivial of underlying undirected graph, so it's much larger than the, if you take the underlying undirected graph, so, so this measure is much larger. Uh, and you can solve MSO1 L on L vertex labeled diagrams. So if you require all these three things, so monotone undertaking sub, sub, sub graphs. Uh, really different from trivet and MSO1 solvable. <coughs> if you have such measure value, such measure cannot exist unless exponential time hypothesis fails. So this is a generalization of our previous result. Okay, I think that's all. So <laughs> thank you very much.